The fourth Sunday of Advent brings a strain in this ritual of preparation. For those who are in the flow of the season and are ready for the full force of Christmas, they're ready for the major scene, the angels, the carols, joy to the world, the little town of Bethlehem. But believe it or not, this Sunday is still set aside as a time of waiting. We are still in there, waiting for the Lord's birth and for the Lord's return. The word Advent is derived from the Latin Adventus, which is essentially defined as to come. And it is one of the most powerful words in the Bible, and one of the most important in humankind's ongoing interaction with God. We see it leading in to anticipation and expectation. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. You know, the text I picked today are not from the Nativity story, but they exemplify this, this notion of come, Lord Jesus. The Bible is really made up of two basic instructions. Go, that would be the law, the Old Testament, the commandments. Go, do something. That is, that is one part of the Bible. And the other is the appeal, the call, the invitation.
that again. We forget that nothing is impossible with God. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Science has advanced in amazing ways in what is called assisted reproductive technology. It's a good thing. There are a number of methods used to achieve pregnancy by artificial means, in vitro fertilization, egg donation, sperm donation, surrogacy. But the dynamics underlying that science have not been duplicated or revealed. No matter what discoveries or intentions that we come up with, the core of creation is still a mystery. It still belongs to God. No matter what the scientists do, no matter how much money they spend, they can only go so far. But what makes that personality unique? What makes those eyes sparkle? What gives this individual a certain spirit? That belongs to God. You know, as a matter of fact, the scientists who led the first efforts to map out the human genome, the DNA of our species, and this is one of the biggest developments in the history of mankind, geneticist Francis Collins writes that this work, when he did this work, and he's been working on it for years and years, left him even more humbled and in awe because he only caught a tiny glimpse of God's language. He's just skirting the, the surface there, just a little bit, just a tip. He is still in awe of all we don't know. That is the wonder. That is the awe-inspiring mystery of God. Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Now, we're not spectators. We enter in and participate in creation, but it is not ours. This conversation between man and God that has been going on throughout history was started by God. This world belongs to God. No matter how far science goes, God stands above and behind all creation. Our responsibility is to be aware of that. I'm not saying that science should probe the depths. I think they should. But we need to be aware that we can only go so far. And the rest belongs to God. And then our job, our responsibility, is searching out the gifts of creation around us. The gifts of creation. That's what this story is about. It's about the gifts of creation from God. And I'm not just talking about the trees and the stars and the lights. I'm talking about our children. There is wonder in baby Julia and her tiny perfection. We can be awe-inspired watching Brian Bells as he grows up. The church can look at every child in this church. I'm going to try something really different. This could be the last time I'll try this. Every child, anybody under 12 and 13, they're over there. Can somebody go get them? Do you think that would be really dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> to maybe go get them. Bringing your 
your cousins and your friends. It's important because it's how we can celebrate God's wonder in the world. There are children. We have to celebrate them. Theologian Eugene Peterson writes that the Christian life is the practice of living in what God is doing and what God has done. And we have to remember that, especially in this season. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. The only
stumble, we struggle, we fall, sometimes we jump. God is a God of mercy. God is a God of second chances and new beginnings. And, and that is the reason that when we begin this conversation in our lives, come Lord Jesus, come, we will start hearing God say, come to me. Come to me. Gentle and happy. Yeah, right. That is the message of the 
sometimes God says, share your burdens with each other. Love each other as I have loved you. That is the message of the season. That is how we make God's invitation real in our everyday lives. Having the mind of Christ in our relationships with others. When we truly learn all the dimensions of casting our, our burdens on God, prayer, study, and fellowship, we can see God diminish the despair and exchange it for God's love. You don't have to be alone this Christmas. You can reach out to somebody.